I had uh, quite the conversation this week with a lady. She's a young lady, 93 years old, still wears wedges, high heels, still dresses to the nines. I think that's a fantastic thing. And she wanted to know, she's unfortunately, she has fallen quite a bit. She's fallen uh, three times in the past month and a half. And so we're dodging bullets. I mean, really, this is, this is scary. Um, but you know, people do not understand how bad their balance is until they fall. Uh, some people have a really hard time facing the facts. You know, that, that you're getting older, that things are changing. Listen, I understand. I coach soccer kids. I still think I can move like I'm 20. I almost fell down in front of the kids last night doing drills. Ridiculous. That's never happened to me. And they laughed quite a bit. So it almost hurt my feelings, but I'm okay. So I just ran them harder. But what we need to recognize, the question she asked is, is why do I need to practice my balance so often? Why do I need to continue to practice? Why can't I just do this once a week and be done with it? And the explanation I gave her, and I've had to answer this question quite a bit. This is not an uncommon question, right? And I think what people ever need to realize is that as things change, you also need to realize so do your habits, right? So do the way you exercise, so do the way that, that you move. And the way I explained it to her was like this. Think about cruise control in your vehicle, right? And so you're going down the highway, you set your cruise control, and all of a sudden you start going uphill. Well, there's a computer in your vehicle that is attached to your cruise control that detects the vehicle slowing, losing momentum. So what does this computer chip do? It sends a signal and it pulls the accelerator to the floor so that you accelerate. Why? To maintain the speed that you desire to be at. Now, when you get to the top and you start coming down, the computer detects much, much more momentum going downhill. And what does it do? It depresses the accelerator. It lets the accelerator out to slow you down a bit to maintain the speed that you set that cruise control at. Your brain and your feet are your cruise control. Your feet detect surface changes. It detects elevation changes from stepping up on a curb from a, a lower surface. It also detects pressure. Your brain is the computer. Just like in a car, you know how a car deteriorates over time? Some of us take care of our vehicles better than others, but a car deteriorates. Well, it's the same thing with your brain and it needs maintenance. And if you keep your car in, in good shape, you keep your maintenance records up to date, you're changing your oil, you're going in getting those uh, service issues dealt with, when the check engine light comes on, then everything, that car is gonna last for a very long time. And that's the way you have to look at your balance, right? Your computer here, as we age, our synapses get further apart. Things change. Recall becomes harder. Getting the information from those mechanoreceptors at the bottom of our feet becomes a little bit harder to, to translate and get signals back, right? That's why we see a loss in agility. By working on your balance consistently, we've talked about this before with exercise, the impact that exercise has on your brain. It literally realigns the synapses in your brain. You have BDNF, which is a neurotrophin that's present during exercise. It's also present during social activities. What that does is that infrastructure, you have workers there, workers that are helped building strong connections. And then what happens is, is as we learn a French word or a salsa step, we have cells in our brains that accumulate and start to encode and they become a permanent part of the brain, right? Think about that computer chip again. Now what we have is if we work on it over and over and over again, just like learning a different language or, or a salsa dance, you have to do it a lot of times to learn it and memorize it, right? And that's the same thing we're doing here with Balance University. You have to practice your balance over and over again because it's kind of like learning a new language. The difference is, is you don't have to spend a lot of time. You don't have to spend hours and hours. It's 1% of your time in a week. 10,080 minutes in a week, you need 1% of 
about 122 minutes, right? 30 minutes, four days a week, 15 minutes, four or five days, uh, five or six days a week, okay? All right, that's how I explained it to her. She shook her head. She said, okay, I'll see you next week. And that was about the end of that. I don't know if it was the answer she wanted, but that's what she got. <laughs> sweet, sweet lady. All right, guys, let's get to work.